Alright, um, in a previous uh, video on the channel I go through how to use Companion with multi-transports. Uh, today we're just going to look at the um, standard Companion OSC module and have a look at how to set that up. So starting from the top, um, if you haven't got Companion installed already, um, head over to bitfocus.io, um, you'll need to sign in and then I've got the the stable build installed on my system. Um, I know a lot of people use beta build, but there's just no modules from the beta that I need right now, so I'm quite happy with the stable. Get that downloaded and installed. Once you are, once you have that installed, you will uh, companion will bind to a IP address on your system. And then you should be able to launch the GUI, which will look like this. Um, if you search for disguise in the connection menu on the right, um, you'll see there are three connections that we can make. The multi-transport control, that was the one that we covered in the previous video. Uh, disguise OSC, that's what we're going to look at today. And then SMC, that's for the out-of-band controller that lives in the VX4, VX2, VX1 and the new GX3. I don't have actual disguise hardware in my little studio here, so I can't actually show you the SMC controller, but if you if you do have those, that's what that's for. So I'm just gonna add uh, a disguise OSC module. If we edit this, um, there's three settings that we need to change, all of which actually work pretty well for us here. Uh, the target IP address needs to be the uh, IP address of the disguise director that you're going to connect to. And then your send and receive ports um, need to match the ports which are in the OSC device in disguise. So let's just head back over there and set this side of things up. So this is a pretty standard just start project, I've taken the projector out but not a lot going on in here. In order to get OSC messages in and out we need to add an OSC device, so let's right click on devices, open that up and add OSC. It's going to be unhappy until we give it a send destination, so this should be the IP address of the machine that you're running companion on, 127. So I'll just put a loopback loop address in there. Tooltips are already starting to wind me up a bit, so let's just um, get rid of those. Um, you'll notice in the send and also in the receive that the, the ports match the port numbers that we have. I'll reopen that. Uh, so they match the port numbers 7401 and 7, 7400. They match these numbers here, so that's good. So that will allow OSC messages in and out of your disguise project. However, we haven't currently got anything to listen to those messages and do anything with them. So we need to add up uh, add a device that will respond to those. We go into transport by right clicking, event transport. So I'm going to make a local transport, name it. And then event transport OSC, the bottom one. So if I pull that out so we can see that a bit better, the OSC device at the top needs to be specified. So if we click, that will give us a list of the available OSC devices in the project on OSC1. Hopefully you'll notice that that matches the name of the device that we have there. So that's good. If we open these messages, these are now the messages that we can send to Control Disguise. Let's head back over to Companion. So we can now create some buttons. Now our companion has provided us some presets for this. If we go to transport control we can just copy and paste, drag these over. Um, I'm just running the, the standard 15 button um, stream deck. So not all of the buttons available in the GUI here are available to me. I can get as far as sort of five and down to 21 there. So let's just keep adding these, I think. Previous and next section, turn to start and then next track, previous track. 
So there we go. So there's our transport control set up in disguise using the, the presets that they leave for us. We go back in here and I push one of these buttons. You'll see a few things happen. So when we when we press the button on the stream deck, the OSC message gets sent to disguise and we see it highlight the the message that it's activating in the transport. You also see in the OSC monitor that turns green when it receives a message. Also, you'll actually see the message do the corresponding action. So we told the told D3 to play and that's what it's doing. If I say, I believe the play section, yeah, play section is broken in the current um, companion preset. If I say loop section, that's going to change the play mode down here to loop section. Or I could stop it. Previous section. So when we start to look at sections, it's worth adding some section breaks. So I'm going to click on a beat on the timeline, Alt S to split it. Split it. Alt S. There we go. So now if I do um, next and previous section, we can see the playhead bouncing between those. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, play to end of section seems to be broken, and I think whatever this means, the, the command is undefined, is, is probably related to that. I'm not, not exactly sure what's going on here. So if we delete that, uh, in fact, let's let's delete that whole button, and I'll show you how to generate a button from scratch. So click a button. We're going to generate a regular button. Do play section. So fix my OCD. Let's make the font size match. And now we do press uh, on our press action. Browse. If you go D3 OSC, and then it's a play to end of section we were creating. So I should have created something there. Um, and let's pop back into the skies to test that. So now if I press that button we just created, you can now see that the playhead starts moving and we are in the play to end of section play mode. Each of these sections really should constitute to being a queue. So let's let's actually make them into queues. So um, first and foremost, let's, let's make them actually do something. So I'll create a video module. Some media. Let's just do one of those. And I'm just going to trim that to the size of the section break that we've got there. And then let's let's add another one. V for video module. And then I don't know one of these maybe. Um, so there we go. We've got two queues. Um, and we can change between them by next to previous section. Which is great if we know where our playhead currently is. If we want to activate these um, using a queue number, to right click on the beat at the start of the um, section break there, uh, change from the tag type from TC to Q, and then give it a queue number, and then we'll do the same for the second queue. Um, so that's remembered that it's a queue tag, and then we can just do that. So back in Companion, if we grab one of these buttons, make this Q1, so out that font size. Now we go Browse, D3 OSC, and then scroll down to find the Q. If you saw when we created the Play Section button, um, there was nothing to configure within the action uh, when we did that. However, when we make a Q, there's this parameter here we just need to set to the queue number. I'm going to copy that, and just update the label, and then update the queue number, and that should be good. So, go back to disguise. They're pushing those queue buttons now. So, if we're somewhere totally different in the timeline, and so a previous wouldn't actually do anything, we can hit our queue button, and get us back, back to recall those queues, and obviously you can fairly infinitely just keep creating queues as per whatever your show kind of needs to be honest. Um, there's a few other few other bits that you can do that you can control with D3 OSC and you can find out what they are by opening your transport and this is the list of messages so things like 
um, changing tracks. So at the moment, changing tracks doesn't do anything for us because we only have one track. So if I left click on the track box, I can generate a new track, track two. Now, if we do our next previous track buttons, we are actually changing between the tracks. You can see that the track label there and on the timeline. So now our OSC buttons for next track, previous track, correspond to that, which is pretty good. Um, if I just stop that now and press these Q buttons, you'll see it's moving the playhead to the start of these section breaks. However, it's not actually running the Q. And the reason for that is if we go into our transport, OSC transport, the Q play mode is set to no change. So when the Q message comes in, it's just keeping whatever play mode is currently active might be what you want. What I tend to prefer is if we change that to play to end of section, when we activate our queue, it automatically changes the play mode to play to end of section, which is how I tend to tend to like to run my shows. Um, just make this a little bit smoother by right clicking the start of these clips, adding a crossfade. So making that a one second crossfade and you can see that by the line that we get at the start of the section break there showing the one second fade. So now when we activate these cues, we get that fade between them, which is pretty nice. So there we go. I think that is uh, a fairly good but quick rundown of um, using Companion and Stream Deck to control disguise. Um, if you want to see how to use the companion multi-transport control, um, check out the video that I did previously on that. Um, otherwise, I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much.